I'm at that stage where I had a perfectly good ambulance and now I've taken enough stuff apart that it is a wreck. <laughs> so let me walk you through what I've done and where I am at this very early stage. My first job here is to get this thing to be registered as an RV. And the state of Illinois where I live has some specific requirements to make it an RV. And here's that list. To qualify, one must be self-contained. Okay, I'll take care of that. Not be used commercially, no problem there. Be permanently converted, got that. Provide direct walkthrough, got that. Only be used for recreation, camping, and travel. Okay, that's pretty easy. Include at least four of the following permanently mounted items. Number one, cooking facility, stove, oven, etc. with onboard fuel source. We're going to do that right now. A refrigerator. Well, there's one right there. Toilet with exterior evacuation. They mean like a black tank. I'm not doing that. I don't want a black tank. Heating or air conditioning system with onboard power fuel. Now, I have both of those, but you will see here it says separate from vehicle's engine. So I will add that right now. And then potable water supply sink faucet, which I'm definitely going to add, water tank. But it wants an exterior service supply connection, which I don't want to do. But it does say here, or 110, 125 volt electric power supply, which I already have. So ding, I think I can do this. So I need a place to put a cooktop. Now the shelving over here is really not suited for that kind of a thing. So I thought, well, here's what I'm going to do. I am going to take this here and cut it right where that line is. I'm going to put a countertop on there. And on that countertop, I'm going to mount a stove. I'm actually going to mount one of those butane stoves that has a propane adapter. And then I'm going to install a propane canister here. I'm going to cut out a hole here so it fits. I'm going to make this be the top. I'm going to put a metal plate down there. And then right at this line, there will be a countertop. Let me show you the idea I have for modifying this cabinet so I can put the propane tank in it. So here's the cabinet. I already took out the oxygen tank mount and it's actually made of nice plywood. But the problem is, is that there is about 11 and a half inches of space here and the propane tank needs 12. So I need to cut this and move it over a little bit. So I'm gonna cut it across like this, right at this line, which I did not cut very straight. And then on this side, I'm going to try to keep this and then I can move that shelf down by taking out these glue things here and then this shelf will slide all the way down and that'll sit on top of the propane tank. Then I just need to make a door of some sort and then a vent. So what am I going to do for a countertop? I went to Ikea and I bought this. Kongsbaka! Let me show you what Kongsbaka is. I actually bought six of them, as you can see. These Kongsbakas are normally $34. I got them for $5 a piece. Yes, they're doors. But you can see a nice flat black panel. And that's going to be my countertop. This is just plywood. And this is a piece of vinyl that is just glued on there. But over time, the glue has come loose for the most part. So I'm pretty confident that I can repair this and have this stay as the surface. And if I can't, I can actually just get more of this stuff. made some progress but I want to show you something about how ambulances are built they're a little bit challenging because of things like this all right you can see I've got the tops cut here that's fine but look how this stuff's attached so see this top bit here As you can see there's screws here that come down from the top now there's no way I can get at them that's because they built this whole unit as one piece and put it in here but then look at this I can't do anything with that <laughs> I'm not even sure how they did that or what that goes to or anything but I can't remove this whole panel to work on this and I can't 
I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> so the point is that if you're going to build out an ambulance, you're going to run into a lot of stuff like this where you're down these dead ends that you can't go anywhere and you've got to be innovative to get around them. I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but I'm going to do something. And so that's the basic idea here. I have a countertop right here and I will have to put a piece of wood across here so that things won't slide off if I happen to be on a tilt and that will also help secure these two pieces of wood here. This part here will become a backsplash and I'm going to have to refinish that. This down here, this will fold up and go over and get stapled and smooth that edge off. I have a piece of aluminum strip for this. The top, well, this is a challenge. So I'm going to have to cover this with something. And given that there's a cooktop down here, I think what I'm going to cover it with is a piece of metal. So any heat rising up here will be dissipated by this metal. Now I've still got this over here, the soft bits here. But I think that'll work. Anyway, we'll find out. Okay, now that I've gotten this board out of the way, there goes the tank. Now this board is going to go back like this. I'm going to have to support that and then the shelf is going to go back on top of that something like this so I have to leave enough space to turn on the valve but when I'm done I should have a nice storage area here and this will be a nice propane locker now propane lockers need to be vented so my idea is to put a vent right here that will actually come out here and then I will go through here provided there's nothing in the way and that will vent outside. I have to crawl under to see if that will work. Uh-oh. Big old DEF tank. Day two of this project and I needed to get some more hardware, hardly surprising, and I, uh, I found this. It's for tying pieces of wood together in home construction. I found it in the aisle with the joist hangers. But it's exactly, exactly what I needed and I'll show you how that works. So this is that same piece of metal, that same connector, and what it allowed me to do was offset this here because the shelf width was set to where it used to be. I basically only wanted to move this bottom portion out, so I cut it, that metal piece goes there to offset, and then it goes up, and it makes a nice seal where no gases are going to escape. Well, the drill slipped. That's first blood. It's officially mine now. Oh, so I've been working away. I have made a lot of progress, but I thought I'd show you um, a trick. I don't have a table saw, so I bought one of these things. This is a little hand saw, and honestly, for like 90%, if not more, of what I do, this is going to be perfect. I am uh, famously challenged when it comes to cutting straight lines. So let me show you what I did to make cutting straight lines easier. It's not the most sophisticated thing in the world, but it works pretty well. It is a yardstick and two clamps. And uh, that actually lets me make very straight cuts with this thing. Uh, let me show you. So it just slides across here and like this, you let it spin up the speed. There you go. That's the piece I need. That's the piece I got. You recognize this. This is a plain old butane stove, but I am going to permanently install it on this countertop and uh, well, hopefully that will pass muster. This is a dual fuel stove, so I'll be able to hook up the propane to it.
This is an Olympian Wave 3 catalytic heater. It is probably not big enough to heat this entire ambulance, but for the purposes of passing the RV inspection, I think it'll be fine. And it'll be good for taking the chill off anyway. Time to clean up. 